Hi kids, welcome to Children's Church. We are glad that you are joining us today. Do you have your supplies for today's journey? Let's see, got your Bible? Check, Jesus goggles? Check, open heart, open mind? Check, check, and double check. We'll sit back, relax, and let's have some fun. But he brought me in Oh, his love for me Oh, his love for me Who the sun sets free Oh, is free indeed I'm a child of God Yes, I am Free at last, he has free
Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and I am so excited today um, because I've made this awesome puppet stage. Yeah, I, I'm going to do a puppet show for you guys, and, and I'm super excited because this is a really, really amazing story that I get to tell. You know, usually usually I tell a story from, from my life, you know, something that happened to me, um, but this is a true story from the Bible. This This is the story of Jesus' sacrifice for us yeah and and it's really really amazing story and i can't wait to tell you so let's 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 go ahead and let's get started all right let's start at the beginning in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth he made the sun and the moon and the stars he made the plants and animals and all the living things and he also made two people named adam and eve and adam and eve was so lucky because God had made this beautiful garden for them to live in, and they, they got to be with God in this garden. They got to hang out with him, and they, they got to talk with him, and they, they got to be in this perfect relationship with him. And it was great. And, and God just had one thing. He said that you can eat from all the fruit in this whole garden, but you cannot eat from that fruit. That is the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. You can have all the fruit in the whole garden, but if you eat from that tree you will die. And one day a snake came along, and that snake's name was Satan. And he said to Eve, Is it true that God said that you can't eat any of the fruit in this whole garden? And Eve said, No, the only fruit that we can't eat comes from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If we eat from that tree, we'll die. And Satan said, Surely you won't die. Go ahead, take a bite. And Eve saw the fruit, and it looked delicious. And so she and Adam, they went and they took a bite from the fruit. And it was awful. Because, you know, even if they didn't just die right then, and even if the fruit tasted good, because they had sinned, because they had done something bad, they had to leave the garden. They had to leave God's presence. They could no longer be with God, because sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for sin is death. And so what people used to have to do because of their sin, in order to pay for their sin, is they would have to make sacrifices. So God's people, they, they made a temple and they made an altar and they, and they would bring these sacrifices and they would put them in the altar and, and, and that would pay for their sins. But, and you know, a sacrifice was like an animal of some kind, like a lamb or a cow or something that they had raised. Um, and, and it had to be perfect. It had to have no blemishes, no imperfections, and, and, and they would put it on the altar, and, well, they, they had to destroy it. And if they destroyed it, then their sins were forgiven. And see, the, the problem with that is that it wasn't a perfect plan. Because every time they sinned, they'd be separated from God again, and they'd have to make another sacrifice. You see, between us and God, there was this gap, this, this separation. Our sin separates us from God. So that little guy kind of represents us. And if we want to be in this right relationship with God, like God wants to be in with us, somehow we've got to cross this gap. But see, we can't do it on our own. No matter what we do, no matter how hard we try, we can't cross this gap. Because if you sin at all, you can't be with God. And everyone has sinned. Our sin separates us from God. But see... God reached down to us. He, want, he wants to be with us. So he sent his son Jesus to be the ultimate sacrifice for our sins, the last sacrifice for our sins that we would ever need. Because of Jesus coming and dying, we get to be with God. That separation is gone. All we have to do is accept that sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And th that's great and awesome news, but, but there's, a really, there's a really sad part to this story. Because you see, if Jesus was going to be the ultimate sacrifice for us, if Jesus was going to pay the penalty for our sins, that means that he would have to die. And he did. Jesus came to the earth, you know, not just to hang out with us and not just to be our king. He came for the very specific purpose of dying for us, for dying for our sins. The penalty for sin is death. And everyone has sinned. And, and so Jesus took all the penalty for all the sin of everyone who believes in him onto himself and when he died he took our place he took the penalty that we deserved so that we could be with god 
And all we have to do is accept that free gift that God gave us in his son Jesus. You know, accept Jesus as our Savior, the one who saves us from our sins. And we get to live forever with God in heaven. You know, we get to live with him the way that we were always supposed to from the very beginning. Now, that might be really sad that Jesus had to die, but that's not the end of the story. Since Jesus is God's son, not even death could beat him. But that's a story for another time. Well, I, I hope you liked my puppet show, and I really, really hope that you will not forget the awesome sacrifice that God made for you in sending his son Jesus to die for our sins on the cross. And I hope that you will accept that free gift, and you'll accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And, and next time, I'm going to do another one of these puppet shows, and, and next time, I'm going to tell you the story of what Jesus did after he died on the cross. Yeah, it'll be awesome. And, and I hope to see you then. Bye, guys. Hey gang, it's Uncle Charlie. You know, when I was a kid, there was this program that came on TV once a week and it was called The Six Million Dollar Man. Yeah, six million dollars. I used to watch that show and think to myself, man, that guy must be pretty special to be worth that much. That's more money than I can count. Then I would start wondering, well, how much am I worth? Surely I'm not worth six million dollars, but I've gotta be worth something, right? Well, now let me pose that same question to you. How much do you think you're worth? $10? $100? $1,000? How about a million dollars? 
Well, what if I were to tell you today that you're worth more than all the money in the whole world? Yes, that's true. And God has already made that perfectly clear. Here's a little story that explains exactly what I mean. The Boy Who Lost His Boat Once there was a little boy who made a toy sailboat. He carefully carved the hole from a block of wood, and then he painted it blue. Then he fitted it with a mast and sails. When it was finished, he carried his new boat to the edge of the river. The little boy tied a string into the front of the boat. Then he carefully placed it in the water and slowly let out the string. Oh, how smoothly that boat sailed! The little boy just sat in the warm sunshine, admiring the little boat that he had built. Suddenly, a strong current caught the boat. The little boy tried to pull it back to shore, but the string broke. The boat began to race downstream. He ran across that sandy shore just as fast as he could, but his boat soon slipped out of sight. All afternoon, the little boy searched for his boat. Finally, when it was too dark to look any longer, he sadly went home. The boy cried because his boat was gone. A few days later, on the way home from school, the boy passed a pawn shop, and he couldn't believe his eyes. There in the window was his little boat. It was scratched and it was dirty, and the sails were torn, but it was definitely his own boat. Somebody must have found that boat and sold it to the pawn shop. The little boy hurried to the pawn shop owner. Sir, that's my boat in the window. I'm the one that made it. Sorry, son, but someone else brought in that boat this morning. And if you want it, you'll have to buy it for $2. The little boy hurried home and he counted all of his money. Exactly $2. When he reached the pawn shop, he rushed to the counter. Here's the money for my boat. As he left the store, the little boy hugged his boat and he smiled from ear to ear. <laughs> he was overjoyed to be reunited with his boat. He took it home and he cleaned it and he gave it a fresh coat of paint and a brand new sail. Then as he looked happily at it, he said, Little boat, you are twice mine. First I made you and now I bought you. So you see, as much as that boat was special to that little boy because he created it, you are special to God because he created you. And get this, when that boat drifted away and became somebody else's possession, that little boy was willing to pay the price to get it back, even though he was the one who actually created it. It didn't matter that the boat was torn up, it mattered that the boat was his. And in the same way, that's exactly what God did for us. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20 says this, For God bought you with a high price. And what was that price? His son, Jesus. So how much are you worth? <laughs> Just look at the price tag. Because God loves you so much, He paid the highest price for you. He gave His only son, Jesus, to die for our sins, so that if we believe in Him, we can live forever with Him in heaven. So in closing today, I just want you to know that you're worth more than money can buy. The God of the universe created you. He loves you. He bought you. And He's got a plan for your life. Yes, you are valued by God. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And repeat after me. G. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing him in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Aku ganti di di Well, we've come to the end once again. What an amazing journey. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.